Hello friends, welcome to TechLake video tutorials. Uh, in this ongoing Spark SQL videos tutorial, uh, previous sessions we covered on DML operations like insert, update, delete, truncate. Today I'm going to cover one of the important topic at Delta Lake feature is restore. So restore, how to restore and how to restore based on version number or timestamp basis. What is exactly time travel that we'll understand today. If you not subscribe my channel, please subscribe and uh, click on bell icon. You'll get the latest updates from my channel. And uh, even some students are asking, uh, where is a DBC file? Whatever I'm explaining this Spark SQL, right? Where it is available, how to get that file. So go to GitHub. And if you don't have a GitHub account, register. This will help you a lot in future. And uh, there's a repository called uh, PySpark Telugu in my account, Ravindra TAL. This is my account. Okay. So there, if you go there, you can find one uh, DBC file called Databricks SQL Tutorial. Copy this URL. And the same URL, it is available in every video description. You can find this link in description. Go to video description and copy that. Right click it, your workspace, import select the url and paste that then it will be imported into a workspace as a folder the folder will be having multiple folders and each folder is having multiple notebooks this way which you can import that entire dbc file follow that and the same url will be available in every video description verify that now let's understand under dml operation restore what is exactly restore and why it is required and uh, how we can achieve this. Delta is one of the format on top of data lake. This is one of the major feature at a cloud. You can say best feature in cloud because when it comes to cloud warehouses. So I think most of the people knows cloud warehouses. If you know cloud data warehouses, MPP data warehouses. So every cloud is having their own warehouse, like Azure is having a SQL data warehouse, SQL data warehouse, or a dedicated SQL pool. So backend is a SQL server and MPP based. And AWS is having a Redshift. So Google is having a BigQuery. And third party, which is a Snowflake, so cloud-based, data warehouse as a service data warehouse as a service so these are available cloud-based data warehouses except private cloud private cloud means oracle db ibm sap hp those companies are private cloud services but these are public services so which you can find most of the projects maybe dedicated SQL pool or Synapse data warehouse or Azure SQL data warehouse. Synapse data warehouse or Azure SQL data warehouse or dedicated SQL pool. That is Azure. AWS is having a Redshift. Google is having BigQuery, Snowflake. But these are the data warehouses. But when it comes to data lake, when it comes to data lake, so data lake on top of data lake, if you want to achieve a data manipulation languages, insert, update, delete, merge. Normally that is not possible with the file system. So Delta is an open source organization. Delta is an open source organization. The team is Linux Foundation team, the Linux Foundation team. So initially they started with the Databricks. They started with the Databricks in 2019. And uh, they are giving a features on top of Data Lake. And now they are having a plenty of features with a plenty of API support, API means which you can use uh, multiple integrations with multiple cloud services. Now, Delta is giving a multiple cloud services. It is supporting with the Google Cloud, HDFS, Azure Data Lake, AWS S3, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud. Okay, and even you can expect future with a uh, these warehouses as well as i told you cloud data warehouses right now already they are integrated with the synapse synapse it is available snowflake it is available 
and you can expect in Athena and the Google BigQuery and Amazon Redshift. So Delta will give you more flexibility. Delta will give you more features related to ACID properties and database related operations on top of file system. These are our app. ACID transactions. Scalability, metadata management, a time travel, which you can go and get back previous versions of data, nothing but snapshots. You can roll back your data based on snapshots. You can retrieve older versions data. It's an open source community. And supports the DML operations with multiple languages, SQL, Scala, Java, Python, and edit logs. This will help you a lot in a projects. Schema metadata support nothing but schema evolution and enforcement and supports for both batch and streaming real time data process, batch process and streaming process. These are major features from Delta Lake. So now we will we'll understand what is exactly time travel. What is exactly this time travel? And when you go to the Delta table, let's okay. So here you can find the notebook name called SQL Restore. If you go there, uh, earlier I created a previous session, I created a table called employee. Just I will show you the data in this table. If you use a command called describe history table name, describe history table name, it will give you audit log. Audit log is one of the feature. How to retrieve audit logs from Delta table? So it will give you complete history. Describe history means zero version zero, version one, two, three, four, five. Which time you did that operation? Which user ID? Which username? Which operation type? Is it create table, writing data, updating data, updating data, restore, update? Which condition based you did? Nothing but where class with the condition based when you are updating, deleting. If you're not using a predicates, you don't see that. Then when you're restoring, which version you restored or which timestamp based you restored, which notebook you used. If you look at this URL, always remember this URL, the URL, your workspace ID after row is your workspace ID, after notebook is notebook ID, after command your command ID. Currently I'm in this command, right? That is a command ID. If I go to different command, command ID will change 8810, 8811, 8812. So this is the notebook ID. Which notebook you updated this transaction? If I take this, if I change this notebook, right? I can get that notebook, okay, hash. Just I'll go back. This is the notebook ID, okay? Same notebook I used for is not able to identify that which notebook we opened. This one only. This is the notebook ID. So normally this is sequence generated ID. Every notebook will have a unique ID and where it is a restore. So that notebook ID, you can find this. Which notebook, which cluster you terminated? So that is a cluster ID. If you go to the uh, cluster, I'll show you that. Compute, if you open the cluster, you see this, after settings cluster, this is the cluster ID. 76VS3, 76VS3, 1014-150455, 1014-150455, same cluster ID. And uh, reader version, which is the reader version, okay, isolation, transaction isolation, and is blind append, operation matrix, how many records are updated, how many records are inserted, how many records are deleted, that their execution time in milliseconds number of copy rows, number of removed files. So everything you can find this. Which Databricks version? Which Databricks version? 
this is about audit log so based on audit log you can restore your data consider i want to restore this version 1 data okay let's show you first uh, before uh, restoring you can retrieve data first first select star from table so i'll show you that data table is having nine records and all re um, the record is having a location id 1 I want a version one. So even you can retrieve that is called time travel version basis version as of zero or one version one. So version one data it will fetch that. You see this different location ID nine records only. Even you can go with the timestamp basis. This is a timestamp, right? Even you can go with timestamp. Okay version one are the timestamp same okay now i want to restore this data so you can use a restore table table name to timestamp as of that one so syntax will be restore table table name to timestamp as of particular timestamp okay or you can use instead of timestamp you can use a version number which version number this two basis version or timestamp version or timestamp even you can create a data frame from this audit log even that is possible when you can create a data frame from this audit log. So it is restored. You see number of files after restore. And you can go to the table and verify. Earlier it was every record is having a location ID as one. Now you can see different location ID. Earlier it was, you see this location ID one. Now I restored a version one. Now you see different location IDs. It is restored. It is restored. So this is about a restore, restoring a previous version, which version timestamp basis or version number basis. Even you can create a data frame in Python. Percentage Python. Spark.sql describe history table name okay you see this okay same data audit log complete audit log information complete audit log information which you can find this so reader version so when you are updating this version, right? If a reader version is four, but a writer version is five. Whoever is reading, they can read that reader version. Whoever is writing, the writer version will be this. So that is called a serialization. Okay. This way, which we can go with the restore is one of the feature in delta lake one of the feature in delta lake so that is possible with only delta table so if you describe sorry if you show create table table name you can see the detail of this table so default it will create a delta table the delta table ddl i will show you this is the delta table using type is delta okay so this way which we can go with the restore Way, which we can go with the restore a restore version basis timestamp basis it may be table or by path by table or by path by meta store by path okay thank you and next video we'll understand merge operations and SED type 1 type 2 type 3 will understand that see you in another video thank you have a good day